Hey everybody, uh, Scott Benz here, AKA Redhead Rebel, and I have uh, Dustin Strand uh, with me on the C Squad show. And this is a pre recorded episode that I thought I'd try. And, um, and if it uh, has some traction, maybe we'll keep it, keep it going in the off season. But, you know, I find in my experience of all the racers and different people I've met in the racing community that they have really interesting stories and insights and experiences and things they've overcome. And one of my favorite drivers uh, on and off the track is Dustin Strand. He's kind of like three generations of racing. His, uh, your, his grandfather raced, I think, a Hornet. Started with a Hornet, right? Uh, and yep. then, of course, your your dad, Brian, um, had uh, two national championships, raced a dirt mod. What else did your dad race? Well, he uh, mostly late models and modifieds throughout the years. You know, he started out in what they called a hobby stock, and then uh, that evolved into a late model. I think it was actually the same car. He just took the Camaro body off and built a late model body on it. Back in those days, it wasn't... Uh, they weren't real trick, but uh, so yeah, he raced the late model for a lot of years, and then and then kind of raced the mod for the second part of his career, I guess. And he won a couple of national championships. Yeah, yeah, he won a couple of national championships. He almost got it done with the late model once or twice, also, but uh, but yeah, he for sure won two with the modified. Yeah, I think one of his doesn't Kelly Hoggle have his like. It's still, he'll still bring it out occasionally as 2000, uh, was it seven, uh, dirt mod? It's a B mod now, but yeah, I think, I think that car might've finally got retired, but, oh. uh, but that was, uh, yeah, that was an old leaf spring car and yeah, that was, that thing made it, made its way around the track for a lot of years, but I think, I think it did finally retire now finally. Yeah. So for the fans that, um, uh, uh, know you or, or some of the ones that don't you want to tell me a kind of a quick overview uh, about you you know kind of your uh, quick uh, racing 101 and a little bit about what you do for a living and your family sure yeah I, uh, well, I started racing when I was 19 of course a lot of people thought I probably would have started sooner than that but I know dad knew in the back of his mind when I started racing that was probably going to be towards the end of his racing, you know, for us both to be able to do it. But uh, I actually started out, a client of ours was in the shop and the guy from Red Lake and he said he wanted a four-door Caprice Pure Stock and he's wondering if I wanted to race it. And I thought, well, sure. <laughs> so I went and picked it up and there was a couple nights with the Pure Stocks, won the second night out. So then I started racing with the Street Stocks and it kind of just uh, was wildfire from there. We raced a couple of years at the streets and then we had a super stock for a couple of years and then we had a B mod for three years and uh, moved up to the modified. Now we're doing the late model deal. And I guess really the only reason we got started in the late model program is because I'm in Grand Forks and they don't race A mods here. And so that was kind of the, the next step to be able to race at home here. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm pretty fortunate too to have all my family's really into racing and my wife, my wife was never at a race before we met, and uh, now you'd have a hard time <laughs> not having her there. You know, she loves it, and she gets into it, and uh, both my daughters love to go. The littlest one's probably too young to know any better, but Paisley looks forward all week to being able to go to the racetrack, so I'm pretty fortunate that way that everybody in my family is pretty into it. Yeah, the... Uh... Uh, I know on the off season you built your daughter a uh, a uh, late model. It was kind of a, a kid's uh, late model. That's pretty. Uh, if if folks want to check that out, I'm I'm guessing you have a picture of that on the uh, Strand Racing uh, Facebook page yeah. somewhere. Yeah, I think we do. Uh, should be on the Strand Racing or on the Millennium page. But yeah, that's a pretty cool little. Little hot rod. She actually, her and Cadence were both in it last night. She just rode it to the park and it, uh, <laughs> it kind of stops cars at places. People are cranking their heads and yelling out the window. So, yeah, it's a pretty cool little deal. A little electric power wheels car with a dirt modified body on it. So, yeah, and it's got all your sponsors. So, you get a little extra sponsor juice on it, too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, 
so, and you've won two national championships, one in the uh, B mod uh, or the Midwest modified, and then another one in the late model. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And uh, any thoughts of doing it in the dirt modified? I know well, you race the dirt modified like 10 times a year and you win like eight of them. Uh, but I think you got to race a little more than that to be a contender there. Yeah, you know, we kind of got uh, so deep into this late model deal. We have actually have a pretty good deal with the NLRA, that touring circuit that we run, because you know, we have Friday nights in town here, which isn't part of our tour, but uh, we have quite a few nights across the summer, and they're all within two to two and a half hours of home. And they're all pretty decent paying races for being that close to home. So, and they get a little point fund at the end. So it's pretty, pretty neat little program they have there. But uh, yeah, we've always talked it'd be nice, be kind of fun to try to do it with the modified. But now all the tracks close to me are pretty split. We got IMCA moved in on us. So half the tracks are IMCA and half are Wasoda and makes it kind of tough. Or you got to travel a lot more, I guess, to, to go get to the right places. Yeah, that's uh, kind of interesting how tracks kind of move around a little bit with sanctioning bodies. Quick question on, a uh, fun question on sanctioning body. I'm going to jump around a little bit, but if you were in a bar fight, who would you like to have have in your back? Terry Volts from Wasoda and his backup, Carson Graham, who's the new uh, kind of executive director in training, Brett Root from IMCA, or Todd Staley? So you're in a bar fight. Who's backing you? Who'd you like to have backing you? Well, I, I don't know. It might be kind of fun just to have all of them fight each other just to see who would come on top. But I, yeah, and then uh, sell some popcorn. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, so um, for, for a living, you build race cars full time. Yeah, yeah, that's what we do. You know, really in the summertime is more repair stuff. I do have actually a new car going together now, but I'm way behind schedule on that. Of course, I've been pretty lucky they're not in a real bad hurry for it. But uh, uh, normally in the summertime, where it's mostly repair stuff, weekly, weekly maintenance and repair stuff. But during the winter, we're doing new stuff and rebuild stuff, I guess. So for the folks uh, listening, you, your, your business is Fast Lane Racing Equipment which is the home of Millennium Chassis. And how long, your, your dad started building it and you've kind of taken it over. Um, and so uh, how many cars do you think you got out there now? Geez, you know, we, we should have taken a closer count on that. Uh, I really don't know for sure, but you know, you go to the, the tracks close to here, like, you know, Grand Forks and Devil's Lake, we got pretty, pretty good numbers on a on a weekly basis. I mean, we're getting a little more and more here and there, but it's working out. There's more guys buying used cars, and, and that's, that's kind of the way I've been trying to promote things, too. When guys call me to, to a new customer that wants a car, I try to talk them into buying a used car first because then it's kind of good for everybody. Then our normal guys can update their stuff, and, and they can get in a really good car for a little more reasonable, and and, uh, but yeah, you know, as far as numbers, I don't know for sure. We probably only build, you know, six to eight new ones over a winter. But uh, yeah, they've been adding up over the years, I guess. Right. You do uh, modifieds. I mean, you, you work on a lot of different cars, street stocks, modifieds, um, and uh, late models, uh, the whole works. What do you think on, on the, do you get, you get keep track of your wins each season on uh, like how many wins uh, does the old uh, millennium team have? Uh, you know, I, I'd have to look, I, I do have that probably documented, but uh, it's gotta I'd, be, have, I'd have to be, do it on that. Probably got to be getting close to a hundred or so this year, huh? With all uh, the. Been quite a few. Yeah. Um, anyway. Um, Hey, let's jump into a quick uh, this or that uh, question, questions, uh, which is uh, race for points or wins? Well, you know, it, it gets tough when you get wrapped up in that point battle because, uh, you know, it, it, you kind of really get down on yourself. You get, you get third or fourth place, and then you're thinking, man, that, 
that was a bad night or whatever, which re reality was probably a pretty good night, but you're hoping for something better, you know? And, yeah, it's uh, kind of crazy. I was at Deer Creek. There's whatever, 24 cars there. I got third. As you know, I'm running for national points and the only guy officially running for national points. And uh, I got third and I was kind of disappointed about it. But the reality of it is, is I beat uh, 21 cars that most of which I'd never raced before at a track I'd been to once before, like eight years ago. So, right. so you race, race for wins. Uh, you know, that's what uh, I mean. That makes it a lot more fun when you can actually, uh, when you're not don't have it in the back of your head. Well, geez, I gotta, I gotta for sure finish this race. So I'm just gonna settle into fifth or fourth or whatever. And, and uh, you know, if you're not really totally worried about that point deal, sometimes maybe I'll take a chance and oh, maybe I'll run it down the outside. I could go off the end, but maybe we'll get it done. You know, and uh, but. Eat your own. It, uh, you gotta, you gotta just do it. Do whatever you're doing, I guess. Yeah. How about slick or hammer down? Well, they both have their place. I don't mind. I don't mind a little bit of moisture in the track if, if it's racy. You know, sometimes it gets to a point where it's wide open right around the bottom one lane. Well, that's really no fun. But you know, I don't mind if, if there's some traction on the bottom and maybe a little cushion on top where a guy can get after it. I probably I probably enjoy that the most, but but although you get to a nice smooth and slick place, when you go to race the next night, you just blow the dust off and you're ready to go racing. So it creates way less work that way. That's for sure. Um, what do you like as far as uh, the racing structure? If it's passing points or point average? Well, I don't know. I guess there's time. Time you get to do some time trial racing too occasionally, right? With the late yeah. model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I really enjoy that. Like when we do that winter racing and when the outlaws are up here, we've been you know we run with them a little bit here and there, and that time trial deal is pretty cool. But, uh, but yeah, I really like the passing point system because at least then you somewhat get rewarded for doing good in a heat race. Where what we have now, a heat race really ain't even worth racing. Really, I mean, other than to get your invert spot so you race your butt off to get get in the invert spot and then you got to start behind all everybody anyway if you're high points you know so right uh, yeah i really like the passing points deal better than the invert i guess yeah you've had a couple of uh you've raced a few of the big touring you've raced world outlaw late model this year Once. yeah just just the one night at grand forks yeah oh yeah and then uh uh, how'd you wind up doing on that? Uh, we ended up six that night. So that was, that was pretty good for us. I mean, we were actually, we probably had a little better car than that. I was up to racing for fourth at one point on a restart, got shuffled back. And, but that was pretty awesome to, to be able to run with that caliber of guys. I mean, you know, you watch these guys on dirt on dirt and on TV and, and then all of a sudden you're on the racetrack with them, you know, and that's, that's pretty cool to be able to, somewhat compete with some of them right. guys yeah you did that with usmts too didn't you have a good run with them when they yeah. were up in this area third at uh devil's lake that was third. really cool but uh, actually we run we won or led for a good portion of the race and uh and then uh the scott brothers they're pretty dang quick they both got by me and ryan gustin so we got running fourth and then i finally got settled in and and actually got back by Ryan Gustin there towards the end and ended up third. So that was kind of a win in itself to pass Ryan Gustin. He's he's one of the best in my book anyway. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, he's uh, the best of the best. Um, so uh, dirt modified or late model, which one do you like wheeling better? I don't know. I think I think they both have their moments. One day I'll, I'll say, yeah, I really like the modified better, and one day it'll be the late model. I mean, I think it just depends. You know, if you get the car right and, and the cards kind of fall in your favor, they're both both a lot of fun to drive. Uh, the, uh, the modified is definitely, you got to be on your toes quite a bit more on that. You know, you got about half the tire on the ground and almost the same horsepower. So uh, definitely when it gets slippery, you got to, be on top of things a little more on the modified than the late model, I think. But how about bull ring or half mile? 
eh, I prefer racing on the shorter tracks, bull ring style. Um, of course, I, I haven't raced a ton on the half mile tracks, and we've, we've had decent success at the big tracks, but yeah, I'd say my driving style probably more suits towards the, the bull ring style. The, uh, how about gas or alcohol? Well, I've, I've actually run them both and I've switched back and forth and, and, uh, you know, one advantage you have racing gas is that the car doesn't change as much. You're only burning a third as much probably, but you give up a little bit of torque, which is probably good when it's tracks really slow and slippery or whatever. But, uh, uh, for the track, like we race Grand Forks weekly and it's, it's a hammer down cushion deal a lot of times so you can use that extra torque so we've been we've been running our stuff on alcohol and i think they both have their place i guess but uh, as long as the alcohol you know if you use it enough the alcohol system works really good but if it's sitting for two weeks and everything gets all gummed up that's another advantage of gas it's not quite as hard on all your fuel system but yeah, I'm, I definitely fall in the uh, gas category, uh, less maintenance. Yeah, and, that's uh, uh Ditch or high side? Uh, I've kind of always been more of a high side guy. We'll run the bottom if I have to, but and there's there's even times when the top's not as good, and I still got to make try to make it work. It doesn't always, but. <laughs> cool, cool. Hey, do you – um? You have any uh, pre-racing rituals that you uh, do? Well, nothing really. Well, actually, this year we kind of started a new ritual. One night we had we had gotten wrecked really bad, and uh, Gailey and Austin's mom had showed up at the track, and she had this little box of Lucky Charms. <laughs> she sprinkled a couple of these Lucky Charms in my seat, and I ate a few. I ended up winning that night. So now she's been keeping my trailer stocked with a box of Lucky Charms. So I always got to have a couple <laughs> handfuls of Lucky Charms before I go out. Oh, awesome. <laughs> um, do you uh, have a kryptonite? Uh, I don't know what my – I probably have a track that's my kryptonite is Alexandria. I don't mm -hmm. race a real lot, but we've been – there's been three or four different times that we were in a position to win the thing. And something happens right at the end. And even a couple of years ago, I led the whole, led every race until the last lap. We had a green, white checkered restart, and it was rubbered up. And I got in, got a little tight, and got past. So I got second. And we always seem to run pretty decent there, but I've never won there before. So oh, yeah. I always, I've always really wanted to win a race there, but uh, this hasn't happened. Yeah. Well, maybe, uh, maybe soon. Uh, what's your favorite track you've been to this year? Well, I'd have to say, you know, probably my home track, Grand Forks. Uh, a lot of people don't like it, but a re one reason I really like it is it's it's def it's a really technical track. I mean, you'll be one corner it might be dry and sticky in the top, and then there'll be a little bump here and a cushion over here. I mean, you definitely need to be up on the wheel all the time. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, that's for sure. Definitely amazes me when I've been there watching the late models where you're three and four wide coming out of the corner, uh, going to the top, bottom, sideways, uh, yeah. quite the exciting uh, racing. I'm surprised that that track doesn't uh, pay-per-view it every week because it's so action-packed. Yeah, it's too bad they don't. They've actually had a they had a Mitco Sportsnet deal where there was a live live TV race they had there once this year. That was pretty cool, and it'd be, it'd be neat if they do that more often. Um, what's the, what's your favorite race you've been in this year? Ah, uh, boy, I don't know. I probably my the. One that comes to mind would be the couple weeks ago in Jamestown, our, that NLRA race we had there. Um, it actually rained uh, during the heat race. I thought we were going to get rained out, but they got the track whipped into shape, and uh, we won the heat, and we had a heck of a good battle for the lead. Me and Casey Meyer run side by side for about eight, ten laps, and it was that was definitely an elbows up, wide open race too. But uh, it was pretty pretty exciting, anyway. Yeah, the uh, 
I talked to Cole Babcock, who's kind of a rookie, but he said he, he pulled off after you lapped him twice. <laughs> um, the, uh, is there, um, do you have uh, three tips for a new driver? So if you're, if you're a rookie driver in your first year or two, do you have any tips for them? Well, I guess the, the biggest thing, if you're going to get into racing, you need to plan on a lot of, a lot of hours of work and commitment. You know, there's more to it than just showing up to the track and unloading the car. And that, that's the other thing. I mean, there's a lot of guys that do it that way. I mean, they're just out there to have fun, and we all are, but, you know, maybe don't have a ton of time, so the car stays in the trailer and it gets unloaded at the track. And I think if, if you want to be consistent and be able to be running up front, you need to plan on car needs to be cleaned up and gone through and just uh, a lot of, a lot of time that you need to plan for, I guess, would be the biggest thing. And, uh, yeah. and as far as on the track, I mean, everybody goes through the stage where at first they're probably really nervous and cautious and then they're maybe a little overconfident and, and tearing stuff up. And I guess the biggest thing, it's easier said than done, but just try to try to use as much patience as you can until you, you know, can keep the car underneath you. Yeah, the, it seems like uh, some drivers uh, drive a little bit better when they're upset, and <laughs> most drivers do not only. Yeah, that's right, that's right. There, there can be a fine line there, you can go overboard on that. The, uh, um, you uh, have any advice for me uh, running for national points this year? Besides stop looking at the points? Yeah, yeah, stop. That would be the best thing if you just shut that website off so no, you don't know where anybody's at. I think that can really get in, in your head. I mean, even when I've done it, done the point deal, you're always looking at the points. Oh, no, so-and-so just gained three points. And, you know, it, that makes it a lot tougher. And, and, uh, and for me, uh, granted, everybody's got their own deal or whatever. Like, I, what I always thought when I was racing for points – was that I, I kind of raced my home tracks that I knew I was good at, that, you know, maybe you didn't win every night there, but that you could run consistently. And, and uh, but just kind of, just got to hit it and I guess do the best you can. That point deal is tough, especially when you got it, you know, like you say, when you're counting points and then you look over here and, oh, so and so won at this track and then you got seconds, so you're down on yourself and just mm -hmm. kind of, go and see how it plays out at the end yeah yeah there's a little uh luck and orbs of twirl at work there too so oh a lot of luck involved that's right um what uh what's your most wanted win probably the sites memorial in grand forks i'd say is the, the probably at the top of my list that's coming up in september yep so we got that'll be in what Three, four weeks here, the first weekend of September, they got that 9,200 to win. 9,200 to win. I just met his son in, I think I've met him before in Bemidji, uh, Nick. Okay, yep. Yeah, so uh, he said, I told him if he wore, he got a redheaded rebel shirt from me, and I told him if he wore it Thursday night, I was going to be there for sure Thursday night that I'd win. So, uh, I don't know if I can keep my end of the deal, but uh, the uh, he was certainly, he, when I asked, I talked to him, I said, uh, are you want to race? And he said, yeah, and he'd like to race as Superstock. So I thought that was kind of cool. I'm guessing, his, did his dad start in Superstocks? Yeah, yeah, his dad started out in Superstocks, and, uh, and then he went up to the late model deal, yep. Yeah. Um, we got to take a quick break for an unofficial sponsor. Weir's machine. They make trick stuff for your race car. Uh, I have them on my race car. Do you do you use Weir's on your uh, late model or mod? Yeah, we use a lot of Weir's stuff on all our stuff on late model, modified, and all our all our B mod stuff too. And they make they do make some really nice stuff. And uh, thing that I like about it when everything's bolted together, everything fits. There's no drilling holes or running a tap through this. I mean, everything's, everything's really figured out really well and uh, they're really good to work with. 
Uh, Chad does a really good job down there. He's got some pretty neat stuff. And uh, yeah, I think uh, at top notch products. Yeah, I, uh, I really like their, uh, their new product, the rear deck adjusters there. So uh, when you're, it, particularly if you're jumping around sanctioning bodies where you got one that's for the B mods anyway, it's like 38 inches, but another one's 38 and a half. And, and then uh, um, there's also the tape measure that's two inches short or anyway, but they're nice where you can quickly adjust your rear deck Make oh, for sure. sure. Um, yeah, a lot of neat stuff. A lot of their stuff kind of bolts together so you don't have to replace the whole, whole piece, like the bird cages, for instance. If you bend something, you don't have to replace the whole bird cage. You just buy a $15 bolt on part and away you go. Yep, yep. So, yeah, Weir's, uh, if, for, if you're a race car driver, um, check out Weir'sMachine.com. They got trick stuff for your race car. Um, Going back, a uh, few more questions. How would you describe yourself as a driver? Well, you know, uh, I'd say I'm kind of a cowboy up, let it all hang out kind of guy. Uh, you know, we all, I really, everybody, I enjoy racing on a smooth select track, but like I said before, I don't really mind if there's a little little moisture in it that a guy's got to get up on the wheel. And uh, that's probably where where I really shine is on a night like that when, when it's uh, maybe a cushion race or, or just traction up, whatever. And uh, Yeah, yeah, you're exciting to uh, watch because uh, you don't ever give up, that's for sure. Yeah, sometimes when I'm driving, I'll kind of settle in because it's like a little over my head, but uh, I don't think you have that uh, barometer uh, of uh, over one's head. You just wheel yeah. it. So, um, is, there a, is there a new driver out there that you'd like to give a shout out to that you've seen that's kind of up and coming that seems to be getting better? Well, there's, there's quite a few uh, young drivers. I mean, uh, couple of our customers, for instance, uh, Jaden Barnson from Devil's Lake, he hasn't raced very much, but he just picked up his first win on Saturday night, so that was pretty cool. Yeah. And, uh, and we got, and, we, and there's quite a few young people, uh, you know, can't even, I'm drawing a blank right now, but another one of our customers, Victoria Stutsky from uh, Winnipeg, she's uh, been racing a couple of years now in the B-Mods, and uh, she's been doing really good. She at first wins maybe eluded her a little bit. Austin's been knocking her down a spot or two every once in a while, but uh, she's always she's always right there, and uh, yeah, we're doing a good job. Yeah, that's uh, cool to see keep uh, people getting better. What for newer drivers? What would you tell them on what what's besides just the standard answer of wheel time? What are some things a newer driver could do to get a little bit better? Like, what are some of the things you did to learn when you're in the learning stage not that you're not still learning but well i guess uh one of the things that can really help is is just being at the track and and uh maybe you know watch watching who's doing if there's one or two guys that are really dominant at your home track just kind of watching them and and seeing how they drive the track i mean there's a lot to i believe each, each race track like there's a certain line or a way to enter the corner or exit the corner that, you know, they're always passing them, leaving two, but they're going in higher, or cutting across. I mean, there's a lot, lot that can be learned by just watching other drivers too. It, it can probably screw you up in some cases also, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've noticed when I watch you that you're, uh, when you're uh, trying to chase down a leader, you're pretty quick to jump lanes and try the bottom, try the high side, go in, cut, slide it up. Where, uh, where uh, you're, uh, I'm guessing you're trying to feel out for the fastest way around the track. So great. Well, there's there's been nights too. I had a couple night like this a couple weeks ago. I got second on a Thursday night and. I was mad at myself afterwards because I just followed the guy the whole race. And I watch people do it, even some of my customers and afterwards, I tell them, you got to get out of that lane. And uh, I did the same thing. It's, it's way different when you're in the car than when you're in the stands, that's for sure. But, uh, but yeah, I try to, 
pull out a line and try to make something happen because I'm not, I'm not a very good follower. Yeah. When you, when you're racing, do you talk to yourself? Yeah, I do. I do oh. talk to myself and uh, a lot. And whether mm -hmm. it be good or bad, I probably, I don't, I, I wish I had a microphone in my helmet because it's probably pretty comical actually, but. Yeah, I maybe uh, one of the video guys can uh, wire yeah. you up someday. What do you say to yourself? I don't know. I know there's a lot of times I'm trying to coach myself, uh, like how I'm entering the corner, and I'll know better that I'm doing a run. You need to slow it down and drive it a little straighter, and then I just keep, you know, when you're trying to run somebody down, it's really tough to enter the corner slow and straight. You think you got to overdo it and go in harder than they do, or... A lot of times, if a guy backs the corner up and just coast in, you probably gain more on it than, than if you just blow in the corner sideways and then you lose all your speed in the center, you know? So, yeah, no I, doubt. I coach myself. I, maybe, I probably have words with other drivers too. Luckily, they can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, a few of those. Um, yeah. The, uh, yeah, I've gotten. Uh, um, Nonverbal communication from a driver or two over the years. So, yeah, uh, they told you you were number one. Yeah, something like that. The yeah. uh, or the, just the fist. Oh, yeah. um, the um, one of those, which usually is, yeah. Anyway, um, I had that when I was in, uh, um, just in uh, Proctor Speedway. It was kind of a hard to pass track and I was going to slide a guy but didn't quite have enough room and then I slid him finally cleared him and then down the straightaway ran into my rear bumper then we had a caution um and then I got the old fist and I was thinking to myself well he should be glad I waited a lap because I totally cleared him if I'd have tried to be <laughs> the lap before I'd have come across yeah. his nose but i thought it was a clean slide job but anyway um but apparently not i got this um okay so um anything that you've seen a, a track do this year uh or a staff member you, at, at a track that you thought was cool that maybe other tracks more tracks should uh do um well, you know, I, I can't think of one thing right offhand, but I know one thing that, that I really noticed uh, that when you pull pull into a racetrack and just the whole atmosphere of the people when they're when they're respectful and thankful that the drivers are there, it just makes things so much nicer. You know, I've got a bunch of tracks before where everybody's, oh, geez, I really appreciate you coming. Thanks for coming, you know, whatever, versus pulling in the pit area and the pit steward yelling at you immediately because you parked in the wrong spot or whatever that uh, can kind of ruin one's night in a hurry, you know, but uh, I think yeah. just a little bit of appreciation even afterwards, just when they're handing the checks out, shake their hand and tell them thanks for coming goes a long ways. Yeah, it really does. You know, when you're up, uh, whether it's, even the local track, like the local one that I go to that does that a lot is Lisbon. You know, when I get there, they're always friendly and some, even the other drivers thank me for coming in Lisbon. Um, and, but out traveling too, not all tracks, you know, I've been there where been chewed out cause they parked in the wrong spot. And then, but I've also been to tracks that are really friendly and Hey, here's where you can pit and thanks for coming. And, um, uh, that's always really cool to uh, to do that. Anything that you you think sanctioning bodies should do more of, wh whichever sanctioning body, whether it's uh, Wasota, IMCA, USRA, NLRA, that uh, well, they should do a little bit more of for fans or drivers or even for tracks. Um, I guess I. I don't really know. One one thing kind of a, I don't know if it would be a pet peeve or, or suggestion, whatever, but one thing I feel that about the rule book, for instance, I think whatever they make the rules up in September or November, when they write that rule book, I believe that's what the rules should be until they have the meeting again, you know, rather than having updates weekly here or there makes it kind of tough and and I mean I've seen it in all the sanctioning bodies and sometimes they're safety related or whatever but makes it kind of tough when they change 
and all of a sudden they got a rule update. Your quarter panel's got to be an inch shorter on a Wednesday. Well, now you got to race Thursday night. Got to be, right. you know what I mean? So just little things like that. I suppose that those it affects you a little bit more because you got um, customer cars too that sometimes got to come back, um, right. or you got to send them stuff to uh, uh, make it where it's in compliance. Then so mm -hmm. that's right. Um, so um, if anything was possible, what kind of car would you race? Like if someone called you and said, hey, dude, do you want to race? Well, I tell you, probably road trucks. Yeah. <laughs> someone called me and said, I don't, you know, but those off-road truck races look kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Honestly, probably what I'm doing now is probably, I don't know if I really want to do anything different. I mean, yeah, it'd be cool to be able to do it more on a national level if a guy ever got to, to that that point, you know, that skill, whatever. But as far as the lifestyle, really wouldn't work for me. I mean, it's hard, it'd be hard for me to be gone. I got a couple little kids at home and, and my family and whatever. So, I mean, probably realistically, the way the way I'm racing now is probably about as, as far as we're going to, we're going to get that. I mean, as far as I know, I couldn't do that. The whole national scene is you'd be, you have to plan on being gone all the time, you know, and right. be different. Be a lifestyle change, that's for sure. What any particular like uh if you had a dream race event you'd like to go to, uh any particular one that uh, stands I'd out to you? I'd like to to race at that, that new Lucas Oil Speedway. It just looks like a really neat place. Uh really like to go there for, for some kind of event. It just looks like it'd be a pretty sweet, sweet deal. Yep, yep. Yeah, they uh certainly doing some cool stuff. Um, well, anyway, we're kind of, um, I probably need a better gauge on how much time we're uh, doing, but do you have any re winter racing plans? Um, well, nothing set in stone right now. The last couple of years we've done that trip to Arizona, so we're hoping we can swing that again. It's really like, that's, that's pretty fun, fun time, and uh get out of the cold weather and enjoy a little heat and uh, pretty fun racing down there. So hopefully we can swing that and then, and then maybe do that King of America race with the modified. And that'll probably be, probably be the extent of it unless uh, I know Nate's been saying he's going to win the lottery. So he might have won yeah. it last weekend because somebody did win it and I haven't heard from him. So he might be yeah. on flex money. So in that case, we might be racing a little more. <laughs> yeah, the uh, yeah, you've won down in Arizona uh, when you've been down there as well, right? Each time. Yeah, we won. Well, we won one of the features the last two years, so that was that was pretty cool. I mean, that was pretty pretty high caliber drivers down there, so that was pretty awesome to be able to to win a couple of them. Yeah. Although, how is it? You know, Nate's kind of a celebrator, so when you do you have to stagger your wins? Cause you know, Nate celebrates a long time every time you win. So is he, is he like, uh, right. I, try to, I try to give him, you know, three, four days in between at least. <laughs> um, who, uh, who are the people, uh, that help you race? Well, we got a lot of, a lot of people that help us out. Uh, I mean, uh, my whole family is very supportive of it. My dad puts in a ton of hours that, that nobody sees, you know, he's running between here and the farm and the track and he's going steady, but uh, couldn't do it without any of them. And also Tim and Nate come with me just about every night uh, to the track. I couldn't do it without those guys either. They do a really good job. Kind of just, they kind of both know what needs to happen and they just keep things going, you know? Yeah. And uh, all of our sponsors, uh, we've had some really great sponsors that have been with us for, quite a few years and uh, Q and Z plumbing and heating out of Grand Forks here, uh, key weight and truck service, um, Sam's auto body, RHR brew, and RHR swag, uh, McCoggin builders, uh, Ben Adams automotive builds all my motors right in town here and he does a heck of a job. It's kind of fun to be able to compete with the big name engine builders on more of a locally, locally build piece. You know, yep. a lot that uh, uh, 
you know, you got to have such and such a sticker on your valve cover. You can't keep up. Well, I don't think I've, I don't know if I've ever had a, a horsepower problem. I've maybe had a, a little driver error or traction problem, but usually we got plenty of motor. Uh, all, all the building center, parallel technologies, um, all true sports advantage as actually a, uh, a gym here in town, they've been hooking me and Timmy up. We go at 5.30 in the morning to the gym every morning. And uh, I think that's helped us a lot. I mean, I know a lot of these races are pretty physical. And, uh, you know, especially you get in a little longer race, 30, 40 lap race, and you can you can definitely tell at the end if, you know, if you can still hang on to the wheel, that's a big, big deal if you start getting tired, you know. Yeah, no doubt. But, uh, but yeah, we just got a lot of guys that help us out a ton, and we really appreciate everybody. The um, if um, sometimes I get people asked if how if someone wanted to uh, sponsor your race team, how would they go about that? Well, I could uh, get a hold of me through my website or on our Strand Racing Facebook page. We have a you can check out Facebook Strand Racing, or our website is www.strandracing.com. Very cool. Uh, one uh, last question. Uh, who would you most like to race against? Like, well, you know, you I can't really think about it in that terms. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it kind of goes back to like what I said before that, you know, you watch, you watch a lot of these Lucas and, and uh, all of guys on TV and whatever. And, you know, I think, man, it'd be pretty awesome to ever be to that level, you know, and, and uh, even like when we've been in Arizona, down in Arizona or racing with the World Outlaws, when you roll on the track and you look over and you got Mike Marler in front of you and Brandon Shepard right next to you, I mean, it's a pretty surreal feeling, you know, it's kind of, yeah, you, 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 you can beat those guys, but uh, pretty, pretty neat to be on the track with, with them, that's for sure. Yeah, and you get a race, uh, Donnie Shots, a little bit too, because he comes up to your neck of the woods with the sprint and the late model. Yeah, I think just uh, just last weekend we raced with him and Minot. He actually won Minot there. We got second, and uh, me and him had a pretty good battle there. And and I, I from what I've heard, I think he's going to be racing with us the next four nights here this upcoming weekend. So yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Oh yeah, um, the uh, you ever race a sprint car? No, I never have. I actually was going to drive uh, a guy's car one time, and I got all belted in, and my head stuck out of the cage. <laughs> <laughs> so that didn't happen. And so, uh, I kind of always wanted to try one until I, I had to work on one a couple weeks ago that tipped over. And I don't know. After I looked at how everything is situated, you got the, the drive shaft, running right between your legs and the rear end staying you're touching your butt and I think like nah I, I don't know if I really have that much desire to get in one of them and what, my wife told me if, if I was ever on the track and one she was going to come pull me out of it anyway so oh yeah so if if Donnie Schatz brought up a spare sprint car with you with a uh, seat that fits a six foot six guy would you hop in it as long as nobody told my wife <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, anyway, well, hey, uh, Dustin, I appreciate you uh, being on the uh, Sea Scott Show Racing Update and uh, want to uh, juice another uh, sponsor, rhrswag.com, which makes cool stuff for racing, dirt mod screens, idle adjusters, and cool air boxes and mud shredders. You can look them up online at rhrswag.com, which I'm the founder of. So that's kind of a biased announcement. but uh, we can't do some of this stuff without partners and spon sponsors. And uh, if you want to check out Dustin Strand, you can check out his Facebook page, like it up, follow his racing adventures. And uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in. And uh, we uh, good luck the rest of the season and hope to see you down in uh, Arizona, Dustin. Thanks, you too.